Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So let us stand together and sing our wonderful joy song, Try a Little Kindness. This will be our last week singing this one. Testament of faith 
sometimes transpose, mm -hmm. there is no God but the God, to read, there is no reality but the reality, <coughs> the two assertions being identical. I hate to feel really dumb, but what did you just say? <laughs> you have to really think about that one. That was interesting. Thank you, Pam, for making a face at me. Oh, my face just escapes. I'm sorry. <laughs> did your face escape? <laughs> That's a very deep thinking sort of like, wow, interesting. Thank you for sharing that today. Of course, Maria always loves anything about science and religion. That <laughs> connects. That was great. Thank you. Okay, we are actually going to stand now, and we're going to sing um, number 64 from the hymnal there. Two verses. Number 64. reminds me, Father, of Matthew 5, where it says, the sun shines on the righteous and the unrighteous, and the rain falls on the good and the evil. You see, Father, we do nothing to earn your love. All we need to do is have our hearts open and accepting. And that's how we want to find ourselves today, accepting. Amen. Amen. I, uh, mm -hmm. It's getting close to Halloween, and I was talking to a friend of mine named Rob, and he lives sort of over at Grandin Village, and he said, last year after Halloween, he came out of the Halloween party, and he's walking to his house. He just sort of leisurely walking, and he heard something behind him going, thump, thump, thump. Well, he turned over his shoulder to look, and he saw it, a coffin. So he, he sped up just a little bit more, you know, kind of briskly, and he looked over his shoulder, and he heard it again, thump, thump, thump. It was coming more brisk after him. Well, this frightened him so bad, he took off on a dead run, running, running, running. Thump, 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 thump. He could hear it following him. He ran into his house. He was going up his stairs to the bathroom. Thump, 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 thump. He could hear it coming. And he got into the bathroom and he picked up the first thing he could to throw at it. He picked up some cough drops and threw it at the coffin. And of course, the coffin stopped. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> 
no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> you have to have an open and accepting heart. <laughs> Today, in our God moment, for our God inspiration, outside my house, I have some tall oak trees. And this time of year, the oak kernels or the oak fall on the ground, the acorns. You can find them everywhere. They crush them underneath your feet. And I was looking at one, I'm going, what a magnificent little acorn. And then you have to realize they grow into these magnificent trees. These tall, towering trees. And it doesn't take just a year. It takes decades. And you know the acorn is like our lives. You know, we are acorn seed. And our lives change over course of time too. We're not made to just stay the way we are. We're made to grow, and progress, and to be the best that we want to be. It takes time. I know sometimes we make mistakes in life. Oh, we, we worry. We have heartbreaks. And sometimes unbelief. We still know that life is just a long walk. A walk to grow, to mature, to be the best we're supposed to be. In John 14 it says, He will come and be the, the way, the truth, and the life. That is our key. That is our acorn of seed. The way, the truth, and the life. Thank you. Will you go with, with your orders of service now and say our statement of being? God is all, both invisible and visible. One presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect self. I am the individualized expression of God, and I am ever one with this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. Well, we're filling in today some of this stuff. Uh, our guest musician was not able to be here at the last minute, so rather than have no music, I have... Uh, one song I'd like to play for you that I'm looking to introduce as a hymn. This is one that I've been transcribing and, and listening to for a couple of months since hearing it in uh, a musical performance last spring. Some of you may have seen, so some of you were there for the Feast of Life performance at Our Lady Nazareth Catholic Church down the street. This again is drawn from Matthew. Uh, this is uh, verse, the title is Where Your Treasure Is. You know the verse that says, Where Your Treasure Is, There Your Heart Will Be. It's a beautiful song. I think you'll, I think you'll like it as we get to it. So I've played through it from time to time here in the background. You may have been hearing it. It's my subliminal effort to, to kind of get that across to you, to get familiar, <laughs> so that when we introduce it, you're going, oh yeah, I know that song.
time in our service for our healing meditation. I look so forward to this time in the service. It's one of my favorite times. A day or two ago, these words came to my mind. It said, a prayer for forbearance. Prayer for patience with each other. A prayer for tolerance with each other. A prayer to show each other kindness. So often we show each other, oh, how busy we are. We, we're so busy doing things, running here and there. I'm just too busy for you. We need to slow that down. And oftentimes my first reaction is to retaliate when I hear something or see something that I don't like. But I'm going to ask God, for me and for you, that instead of retaliation, we look towards kindness. Forbearance. Patience, kindness with one another. Father, many have come today, I don't know, with glad hearts, happy hearts, overwhelming hearts, celebratory hearts. And others have come with issues, life issues, human issues. We all run against those, don't we, from time to time. But 
like that same sun that shines on the just and the unjust, the righteous and the unrighteous. That same love is surrounding us. I invite you to release, let go, turn it over. In these next 90 seconds, I would invite you to to think on that word forbearance and how it can play in your life. Can you be more tolerant, forgiving, accepting, inclusive? I invite you to go with you now. gently, very gently, come back to where we are now. I hope our hearts are a little bit more accepting, a little more inclusive, not so judgmental. Thank you, Father, for the spirit within this room. Thank you, Father. St. Cloud, Minnesota together for just a little bit. We'll go back to September 21st. 
Oh, it's it's chilly day there, September twenty first, and uh, as it would be in Minnesota. And it, I think it was a rainy day, a little cloudy, a little overcast. And a race was starting. The St. Francis five k race was starting. And Kate Lovell, he's nine years old. He's gonna run in this race. You see, Kate had been running since the age of six. He joined a cross-country group when he was six years old. He runs two to three miles three or four times a week. He's nine years old. And he's entering this 5K race. Well, of course, they all take off. Kate is right with them, running hard. His mother's always so proud of him. Well, he comes to a turn. And a lady says, go this way. And Kate goes that way. And he's running and running, and he's thinking to himself, boy, this is a long 5K. This, is, this feels like a long ways to me. But I can do it. So he ran and he ran and he ran. Unbeknowing to him, he had entered into the 10K. And he ran and he ran, and he did not know it. But he ran the race. He beat every other competitor, three, four times older than he. He beat the second one by a full minute. And his mother was so worried about him, she, she said, where is my son? He should be here at the 5K lineup. Where is he? The finish line. And of course, he wasn't there. And she even started crying and bawling. She enlisted the help of a fireman to help her. Find my son, he's missing. She was so surprised to see him. She thought, when she finally found him, she thought, well, he came in last. That's why no one else is up here. She didn't realize he'd won, and he just had to wait around for everybody to catch up. <laughs> you see, he took the wrong turn, but it turned out okay. And that's what we're going to talk about. You can take the wrong turn, but it'll turn out okay. Well, let's go to Genesis. We hardly ever go to Genesis, you know. Let's go to the very beginning, Genesis. I think it starts around Genesis 11. And we're going to talk about Abraham and Lot. Well, they are in Canaan right now. And Canaan is experiencing a famine, drought. And they're having to leave Canaan. And they're going towards Egypt. And they're going together. See, Lot, Cain, I'm sorry, Abraham is Lot's uncle. And that's how they're interrelated. So they go to Egypt, and they become very wealthy. They have a lot of cattle, a lot of flocks, and a lot of tents. So they're making their way back. They heard that the drought, the famine was over in Canaan. And as they're coming back, the Canaanites started fussing about themselves, and the herdsmen started fussing with each other. These two groups, the, the group of Abrahams and the group of Lot's, they were fighting with each other. They had so much cattle, they had to worry about where they were going to graze, and one was taking the grazing away from the other. So they were having a hard time with it. And Abraham said, I tell you what, I'll let you choose where you want to go. You choose your path. You choose which way to go. If you go to the left hand, you can go north. If you go to the right hand, you can go south. Well, this was unusual because the elders at that time had first choice. But Abraham let Lot go ahead and choose. Well, Lot, being a very smart fellow, looked around and said, well, I'm going to go to Jordan. Jordan is a lush pastures. I can feed my cattle, my flocks, my tents, all I want. So he looked over into Jordan and he went to Jordan. Abraham went on into Canaan. Matter of fact, he even called Jordan. He said, this is the, the garden of the Lord. It looks so spectacular to me. The garden of the Lord. Well, he went to Jordan. And there's a city there called Sodom and Gomorrah. And 
because he got kind of attracted to it. And he moved his tent closer and closer to the limits of Sodom and Gomorrah. And we know all how that turned out. He had to flee. And it was he's fleeing. His wife turned back and looked, and she was turned into a pillar of salt. Lot ended up having to live in a cave. His choice. But what about Abraham? What about Abraham? What happened to Abraham? He didn't have first pick. The Lord said to Abraham, whatever is north, south, east, or west, Whatever you can see is yours and your offspring. I will make your offspring as plentiful as the dust on the earth. And you can count, if you can count the dust on the earth, you can count your offspring. You see, his choice made him the father of the Israel nation, Abraham. <coughs> He won the 10K, didn't he? Abraham. I, uh, I want to share, you, share with you the story. And I asked permission first before I, before I did this, but I did not tell the material. I just asked permission if I could share the story. Wendy and I had been dating about, I looked, eight months. We were going to take a road trip together. This is a perfect example. We were going to take a road trip together. First road trip. So I'm sitting in the car and I've got the driving wheel in front of me. And I said, you can have everything from the radio over. It's all yours. <laughs> you're the navigator. You're the navigator. You know what you're doing. you got that fancy phone. You can see all that stuff where we're going. You're the navigator. But I had in my mind how to get there. I had a map in my head of how to go. We're driving up 81 talking as people would. And we get to a turn off. This is exit. Well, I'm thinking, well, this is the way to go. I know the map in my head. And now I'm told, no, turn left. So I'm thinking, oh, okay. Turn left. She's the navigator, of course. I'm going to turn left. Well, we ended up going through some little, small, little town. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm thinking, you know, I don't think if you're going to this destination we were going to, they would take you through this small little town, but maybe they would. A small little town. Past one little gas station, one traffic light, and all of a sudden she says, take a right. And so we're looking out of the corner of my eye, take a right. She's the navigator. So I take a right. We keep going and going. You see the little, little tiny houses out in the country are sort of disappearing as we're going. And I see this huge, huge mountain in front of me. Huge mountain. And I'm looking at her and she's, keep going. Well, we're going up this mountain. I call it today Lost Mountain. <laughs> we're going up this mountain. And the pavement, you know, there's, it's a two-lane highway right now. As we're going up this mountain, going around the curves, it's no longer too late. It, it goes down to one lane. Keep going. Keep going. I'm thinking, it just doesn't seem right. And then it stops being pavement. It turns into gravel and tar. <laughs> I think, well, this, this, I know this can't be right. Keep going. She's the navigator. And here's what happened. It was amazing. We're going up this mountain. I don't see any cars hardly anymore. Every now and then you see somebody, I can look in the rear mirror, there's no one behind me, no one following us. I'm thinking, well, we've lost cell phone coverage. If you run out of gas, you're out of gas. And she says, Doug, look at the trees. Look at the green of the trees. And you can, the canopy of trees are covering the roadway. And you can see just a little bit of the light from the sunlight coming through. And she says, look out. Bouncing around. Look at the trees and the light. And she says, look at that little brook down here. Do you see the brook? Uh, yeah, I see it. Do you see the little rocks in the brook? Yeah, yeah. 
And she said, I'm going to roll the window down so I can listen to the brook. You see, she took, we took the wrong turn. But we took the right turn eventually, didn't we? We got to see those trees and that brook. And we got to have an experience we call Lost Mountain. We've talked often in here about the Sea of Galilee. And to refresh your memory, remember the Sea of Galilee is 13 miles long, 7 miles wide. It's in a gorge with mountains on either side of it. And they say the east wind blows a cool air over the waters. And the warm waters of the Sea of Galilee come up. And because of that, it can form very, very treacherous storms, very quickly, furious, very quickly. Matter of fact, in Mark 4 is where you can read about the storm and Christ in the storm on the Sea of Galilee. In 1633, Rembrandt painted Christ in the storm on the Sea of Galilee. Oh, I would encourage each person to look at that painting if you could. You can pull it up. It's the most magnificent painting. He, it says that he uses these bold, bold brush strokes and the use of light and the characters, the use of the characters and the face, how he paints the faces on the characters. Can't do any better than that. Well, <coughs> this depicts the storm, of course, on the Sea of Galilee. And it shows the disciples in the boat. It shows Jesus at the, the rear of the boat, setting and resting. Remember, he was resting from the long day of teaching. He was supposed to be resting. And that sudden storm came up. And in the picture, you can see there's one disciple at the bow, the circle ring of the boat, sort of hanging on. There's five of them all together, still trying to navigate the waters. They're around the mast, trying to hold it in place. The others are huddled around Jesus. And he's calmly sitting in there in a dark navy blue robe. And you can see on their faces, you can see them going, Jesus, wake up, wake up. I know these are Galilean fishermen. <coughs> they must have been so frightened. I, I don't know what kind of storm this was. They've seen this before. Jesus, wake up. Wake up. We're dying. Wake up. And Jesus awakens. And he says, why are you fearful? Oh, ye of little faith. Why are you fearful? Oh, ye of little faith. You know, I've been in that boat before. I know what that boat feels like. In this picture, you can see the, the swell of the, the water and the underside of this particular wave hitting the front of the boat. It even has one disciple hanging over the side of the boat getting sick. Well, I've been in that boat before in life. I might be different from you. I've gone through anxious moments. I've gone through some hard times. What are you fearful for? Oh, you have little faith. Let's go back and look at that boat again. Let's count the people. You know, let's count the people. We've got the one disciple at the front of the bow. We've got five others around the mass. That's six. We've got the, the group around Jesus. That takes in the twelve. And we've got Jesus. That's thirteen. But there are fourteen people on the boat. There are fourteen people on this boat. If you've ever seen Rembrandt's self-portrait, you would know who's on the boat. Rembrandt painted himself looking at you. His face is turned to look at the viewer on the boat. 
Rembrandt knew that we were all in the same boat. He knew that we've all experienced anxiousness. All have been afraid of taking the wrong turn. Rembrandt knew this and painted the common man in the boat. Just to finish the story about this magnificent painting, it, it hung in the Isabella Gardner Museum in Boston. One of the greatest, greatest paintings of Rembrandt. It was stolen in 1990 by two thieves that were dressed as police officers. They came in and cut it from the frame and took a couple other pieces. It's the largest art theft in the United States history. And that painting has never been recovered. We're all in the same boat. I uh, sort of wanted to wrap this up because I know we've taken the wrong turns and most of the time, all the time, it can turn out okay if we, we're not so fearful. We're not so afraid. Listen to this. Romans 8.38 For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in creation, anything else in creation, can separate us from God. God omnipresent. You think you took the wrong turn. God on me present in prayer. <clears throat> Will you go within with me now? Father, thank you for your spirit today. Thank you for the music that we heard that made my heart glad. Thank you for those in attendance and for their, their accepting ways and their accepting hearts and their forbearance. Thank you, God, for this church as we celebrate your omnipresence. Bless this church and all that we do. Amen. Amen. sharing our gifts, and if you would join me um, in saying the blessing of the gifts together, we find your order of service. <coughs> Today, I acknowledge God, omnipresent, <coughs> as the source of all good, as the source of my good. With this acknowledgement, I accept his will, which is abundance in every aspect of my life. I release all thoughts of lack and limitation. And I am open and receptive to the increased flow of abundance to me right now. I joyfully accept the gifts of life and give freely of the special gift that I am. Through me, God omnipresent blesses and multiplies this gift for all. Thank you, dear God. Pray for another 
not only blesses them, but it blesses you too. We don't do that selfishly. We do that lovingly. Good morning. Okay, uh, first off, I want to thank Doug and Rick and Bob and Nancy for stepping up our whole schedule that turned around this week. So uh, I thank everybody for stepping up. Uh, and it's, uh, we always have, if somebody can do something, we always have someone to step in. I really do appreciate it, uh, especially Doug. I know it was uh, a short notice for you, but I appreciate you and mm -hmm. that, what a message you gave us. So thank you. Okay, next Sunday, uh, next Saturday night, the time falls back. You get an extra hour of sleep, so mm -hmm. let's make sure we can come in here dancing around next week. You get an extra hour of sleep, so you'll be reminded uh, Saturday, Saturday sometime about that because I know we, we all tend to forget it. Uh, let's see, uh, journey class Tuesday night, 6.30 with Pam. Uh, November the 9th, which is the second Saturday in November, we're going to have our another uh, store sale um, that's open to, we're going to have it for everybody. And so instead of just a little store that we have in, in here, uh, so this is again, this is another fundraiser to help pay for our chairs. Uh, the chairs have been ordered. Uh, hopefully they will be here uh, by the first of the year or a little bit after. Uh, yeah, they will let me know uh, shortly when they will be here. But they have been ordered. So we still have like uh, probably about $1,600 to raise. We raised well, we're about, about well over five thousand dollars. So, yay! So, anyhow, hopefully with this sales, to make everybody everybody come out and buy something. And if you have anything that you want to contribute uh, <coughs> to the sale, uh, please bring it. Uh, especially, I think we're going to push Christmas items. Uh, so, anyhow, <coughs> that will be from eight thirty to eleven thirty on that Saturday, and we'll be talking about that again uh, closer to the time. Uh, also, in the next couple of weeks, I think the second week in November, we're going to have the sanctuary painted, so bear with us as things get turned around here a little bit for the next few weeks. So we're going to have that painted. Hopefully it will be done by the time we have a guest speaker um, for, your, for your group that, um, in November. Uh, also, uh, it's time, I know it's, it's hard to believe it's almost Thanksgiving and Christmas again. Like, oh, what happened here? But anyhow, we, we have to order the poinsettias that we uh, normally order. And so this year we had decided that we would order the small poinsettias again and take them to the facility where Pam works. And I think you said there's 70 residents there. So we're going to try to get at least 70. These, the poinsettias are $3, so I'm going to have a sign-up list, but I'm going to go ahead and order the 70 because I know that they're going to be paid for. So there you go. Uh, so anyhow, and we made some cards at the craft, at, uh, at Ann's craft show uh, uh, class, and we had a really good time with that. Did you y'all finish working on uh, putting them on? No, yeah, I'll have to take. Okay. So anyhow, we uh, we made cards to go with these poinsettias, and uh, it was that was a lot of fun also. So anyhow, and as I said before, when we have these things on Thursday nights or whenever we have them, especially um, the craft, we have we just have a lot of fun, and you know we just laugh and listen to music and whatever. So anytime you have a free evening to come out and just, you don't even have to do anything, just be here if you want to. Uh, let's see, and then also in uh, November coming up, we have a special guest speaker on the second Sunday, the 14th. Yes, the 14th. Uh, Neil Helms, uh, he will be here for Marita's uh, ND class, I mean, uh, meeting, and then he'll be here speaking on Sunday. So anyhow, um, we got a lot going on in November. Also coming up in November, of course, is Thanksgiving. And as always, we'll be talking about this later. We have a Thanksgiving dinner here for the folks that uh, don't have any place to go or don't want to be with their families or can't be with their families or for whatever reason. And we'll be talking about that later when people can sign up for and bring whatever they want. But we always have, we've been doing that for the last four or five years because um, people get, uh, the holidays are stressful, so we try to, Try to make them as non-stressful as possible. So oh, we we try to work on that. Uh, I also wanted to let you know, as some of you do, know, since Greer had knee replacement, uh, what last Monday, she's still doing great. Yeah. She's doing great. So uh, anyhow, if anybody would like to send her a card, please get her address and send her a card. I'm sure she'd be glad to hear from us. So I uh, appreciate that. Um, I think that's all I have. Marita, did you have anything? Yes. Yeah. 
Do I? Well, the flowers uh, are sponsored by Ann for Bob Dieter's birthday. Yay. So, hey, Bob. He's a Halloween baby. <laughs> um, this afternoon at the Roanoke Sikh Temple, they're going to have a Diwali celebration of lights. And this is something that uh, the, uh, let's see, what is it called? The, uh, well, it's an interfaith group called the what? Voices, of faith. Voices, that's right. Voices of Faith, and uh, so uh, different churches open up their church for uh, either a service of some sort and then an explanation of their beliefs, and that's what the, the uh, Sikh, or the members of the Sikh temple are going to do. Um, this Diwali celebration of lights will take place uh, between 5.30 and 8 p.m., and it, um, it apparently is a very special celebration in their, their calendar. And in the, in the Sikh temple, you, you have to remove your shoes when you go into the worship area. You have to have something over your head, your bandana or a scarf or something simple. Um, and you have to sit on the floor. But. Uh, <laughs> After this celebration, and also an explanation of what they believe and of what the meaning of this celebration is, they're going to have a vegetarian meal. So please think about coming. It's at 2222 two, 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 Wildwood Road in Salem. Should be a very interesting kind of thing. So think about coming today. That's today. And also, one other thing. I found out that on Friday night, Neil Helm is going to speak about the history of and spirituality of near-death experiences. Uh, he, as you probably had read in our flyers, he uh, experienced near-death when he was when he drowned at the age of five, and um, he has been. Uh, well, he's had a relationship with God, and she, he has been extremely extremely successful in his life. And by the way, I have some flyers here. If you put up a flyer that didn't have his picture on it, I have them with his picture on it, and I'd like to, for you to exchange the pictureless one with the pictured one, if you can. So I'll give these out to whoever would like to have one. Thank you. All right, I think, does anybody else have anything? Okay. Alrighty, well, let's get on with it. Let's see, we have, uh, Nancy had to go next door. So, uh, to close the there's number 39, uh, three verses. Okay. He's like a river. He's like a river, yes.
He's like a river. We're all in the same boat. Let's remember to be kind to each other, to be accepting, to be tolerant. Let's treat people like we learn on Sundays. We go forth in mercy and in good health. Amen. Amen. Amen.